Hi everyone and welcome back to this week's episode of the Real Talking Podcast. And uh, yeah, we've had another eventful week. It's uh, been a bit extraterrestrial this week, haven't we? Yeah, active. Yeah, so uh, I'll let you start off with your little piece. Yeah, so an interview came out with David Grush, who's a former Air Force officer, a former intelligence officer, and a geospatical intelligence agency officer. Yeah, I, I reckon they're just making words. Up yeah, sometimes. I mean, there's always an officer with uh, with Americans are like intelligence, you know, officer. Yeah, because you're smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so this is the interview that he did, and this is what he had to say. If you telling us the truth, everyone, the entire American public, has been lied to for decades. Yeah, there's a sophisticated uh, disinformation campaign targeting the U.S. populace, which is extremely unethical and immoral. You are saying to the human race, for the first time, an official intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. We're definitely not alone. Absolutely, the data points empirically that we're not alone. Do we have bodies? Do we have species of... Well, naturally, um, when you recover something that's either landed or crashed, um, sometimes you encounter um, dead pilots. And uh, believe it or not, as as fantastical as that sounds, it's true. So yeah, that was David Grush saying that we're not alone. And, you know, sometimes you encounter dead pilots from aircraft that are not human made. So, I've got, I've listened to it, and also, um, he did confess that him himself is not a direct witness to seeing any aircraft himself, or even touching one or anything like that. It's just, he's found the documents, he spoke to the people that's provided photographs and so on, and that's how he's came to know, and he obviously went further into it. Yeah. But, so, it is an interview that I've... I've flagged myself and I've been meaning to listen to. Yeah. Um, so he's, he says that he's not physically seen anything. No, it's yeah. just from everyone else that he spoke yeah. to and the, the evidence that he's seen. Right. right, so, but the one thing, and it's just the one thing, look, so anything mysterious, we love. Yeah. And aliens, I get it. And I want to believe this. I really do. Mm-hmm. But it's when he says about the pilots from spacecraft either landed or crashed. Now, if, and this will go on to further, we're going to talk about later on actually. Because if an an aircraft crashed, why wouldn't it be in in an area where there's loads of witnesses and and how would, why would, if it was going to crash, why would it be in the middle of nowhere but only the like? Well, going off of, like when, uh, uh, <clears throat> pilots for the planes um, mm. having malfunctions or whatever they always try and aim for uh, like the ocean or yeah. areas where they're not vastly populated to minimise any damage and yeah. fatalities so there could be that kind of bit of a thought process going in their heads yeah. um, or whatever they do have uh, that yeah. has their intelligence in there but also we said landed so why would they just land it over like wherever, wherever, and just, you know, these people know where they've landed? Yeah, well, you know, I've, I've been seeing a lot of these UFO videos, not just lately, but uh, for a while now, and um, there is a fair few, I think there was some in Vegas recently, where there was a, looked like a star constellation, there was that many mm. lights from these crafts in the air, and it wasn't just one person that recorded, there were several of them at the same time, and you could see all the different camera points of views. And, uh, yeah, so I, I don't feel that they're always going to try and hide and crash or land in different uh, non-populated areas. It's just that everyone's got a, a camera in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so it's going to be... I, I think people like this now have got to start coming out because they can't hide it for too yeah. much longer. It's going to be too easy for everyone to figure everything out. Yeah, well, you are right, on that. And you, you did come out and say that they've got a few of these spacecraft and in terms of coming out, obviously, uh, there's a woman called Leslie Keane, and she's the one, I don't know if you remember, Jack, a few years back, uh, the Pentagon released all these um, UFO videos.
video is that the kept secret for a while and they've become really popular. Yes, yeah. the, the Tic Tac one, I think, is the most famous one. And uh, she helped obviously bring that to the forefront. Yeah. And obviously, she's helping him bring this out to the forefront, like, you know, bring it mainstream. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do think a lot more people will come out, but how, 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 if, yeah. imagine you, spacecraft landed, what the fuck would you do? <laughs> well, it's panic station straight away, yeah. really, isn't it? Um, you know, it's, if, if they literally did just land in the garden, you're scared at first, yeah. you don't know what's happening, but you've just got to you've be intrigued. Yeah, you've yeah, just got to look and just see, you know, do they need help for starters? Yeah. Do they look like they're injured? Or uh, are you just going to get out of your house and run? Um, but that's that's quite an interesting one because I've, I've actually got a little bit of footage myself. Um, so uh, I think this was in Las Vegas, and uh, it actually shows, uh, we can hear the normal on phone call, this video, so I'll just play this. Officer's body cam catches this something flashing low in the sky. 911 emergency. Minutes later, there's a there's like an eight foot person beside it, and another one's inside, and it has big eyes and looking at us. And it's over. Someone calls 911 reporting two large figures in their backyard. No, I'm so nervous right now. The A News Now investigators obtaining another officer's video as he's sent to the Northwest Valley home. I have butterflies, bro. I have Well, so I'll give you the gist of it. Um, there's the normal one call with the lads. Uh, he's rang up. There's been something that's crashed in his backyard or by the backyard. Mm. And uh, as he's, he's run out, he's, uh, he can see these two, two figures, uh, the eight, to nine, uh, eight, nine or ten foot tall, and uh, he, he carries on, he, he describes them, they, you know, they're quite uh, stocky, they've got big eyes, um, and he can see the noses as well, and they were just staring at him. And <clears throat> you can see from uh, another police officer's body cam footage, blue light just falling from the sky in that direction. So the police officer that actually um, responds to the 911 call, he pulls up and straight away he's saying, look, you know, if it wasn't for one of my officers seeing this light fall mm. down in this general direction, I wouldn't be entertaining this because we get, you know, yeah, calls up all the time. And uh, so he's, he's run through and he's asking neighbours, did you say anything? They're like, yeah, the light just come down, heard a big bang, and yeah, that's all we know. But there's no, whatever crashed or landed had gone within minutes. So essentially these beings come out, had a little bit of a look around for a couple of minutes, and then they've toggled mm. on, essentially while the phone calls are being made. There is footage as he's gone into his garden, but because he's got family members in front of him, and it's just like a, a Three foot gate that he's trying to look through. It's it's more towards like uh, outside of his garden, out yeah. of the back of his back garden, um, and you can just about make out what seems like a head with big eyes, but it's 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 dark and it's yeah. a bit blurry and it's zoomed out. Uh, so it's it's uh, the evidence is there really. It's whether it's actually idea life forms, mm. we'll soon find out. You know, it's uh, it's it's quite a strange one, really. You know, it's it's a shame that he didn't get a good picture of it. Yeah. But he, he's done videos since as well, saying, "Look, you know, I'm not here for fame or anything. This has actually happened. You know, I'm not trying to get money or whatever." And he recalls his events. He was just chilling in the house and whatever. And then his brother shouts to him, so he grabs his tools, goes out, and he's like, "Ah, oh, crap! These are here. What what did he do?" Um. So yeah, it's uh. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I'll be about to get invaded. We are uh, going to release all evidence of what has been and what's going to come, or is it just the odd one that keeps popping here and there? Because this year has been quite active. We meant, well, yeah. me and you spoke just quickly before, off, 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 you know, off the pod. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because I remember earlier in the year that um, I think they shut down a supposed. UFO with UAP, whatever they want to call them now, oh, yeah. over 
Canada and Alaska. Yeah. So this year, I mean, you know, I think next year or so, we could, and then obviously they released the thing last year in terms of the videos from the Pentagon. I think mm. it was all 2021, maybe. But anyway, it just seems that the movements, it's coming as well. It's always been quite reserved and quite frowned and joked upon yeah. that, you know, it's being pushed forward more than it normally would do. Yeah, um, I mean, again, there's, there's other potential theories out there. There was a, a, a bit of a section on one of the Joe Rogan podcasts that I was watching the other week, and uh, the gentleman that he was interviewing, he's been in the contact with a person that's been developing or redeveloping old and lost technologies. So uh, they touched on... Um, how the pyramids were made, and one of those theories is that it was uh, how they moved the rocks, the stones, mm. everything was uh, through a sound wave. So with the hieroglyphics, there's pictures of or a group of uh, people standing around the rocks and the stones floating. So the, the theory is that uh, essentially, you know, when you've seen these videos of uh, a person's got a glass in front of them, then they hit a high note and the glass will mm. shatter. So they're somehow uh, resonating the, the vocal cords to be able to lift these stones and everything and put them into place. So that's one potential. That's probably not a technology. But uh, there was also the Tesla technologies um, and then uh, just other ones that the Egyptians and the, uh, uh, bloody, all the ones of the pyramids and that, uh, that have potentially been lost. So this, this person's been reinventing them mm. or re, refiguring them out. And so that's, uh, it's not that they haven't already figured it out. It took well, 10 years or so to be able to get the patterns for them. Mm. So because obviously everything's probably copy bolted and uh, registered and everything now. So uh, now that they've got all that in, in position, you're going to potentially start seeing these new technologies coming out. So, you know, the flying cars or everything will come out. Uh, so that was leading me to think if we had all these advanced civilizations hundreds of thousands of years ago, is it that they explored, gone so far out, haven't found anything within their capability and they'd have come back? Or maybe every now and again, do they just send someone back just to see what's going on? Yeah. Where are we these days? You know, because uh, you can search through, it's all on Google and that. There's, uh, Different images of uh, the way what the pharaohs had the big hats on. Yeah. And they have like the alien looking heads. Yeah, so it. it's yeah. A, like a prolonged skull. Um, and there's, there's ones that have been dug up. They're actually in museums over, I believe, in Mexico as well, uh, out on show. Um, so is that like a former human. Like a hybrid? Like, well, or... it, it, is that what we were before? Mm. those civilizations went you know did they know that the, the comets were about to come down and you know just uh, destroy most of the planet so did they leave and uh, what was left behind that gradually evolved into what mm. we become then um, and it's, it's strange as well because you think how, how many like, dinosaur bones and that that have been found but there's not as many other animals you know, they, they don't really find bones of like giraffes or something mm. just dotted around. So it makes you think, so how we have our burial systems, so obviously we bury sheep or, or cremate them, uh, you know, we'll bury our dogs and stuff. Did those ancient civilizations have the dinosaurs as pets and or, you know, like mm. animals that they use to help with their civilization? And did they have the ceremonies? Them. Yeah, it's interesting because yeah. especially when you go back to Egyptian times, you know, mm -hmm. the hy like, I'm not trying to get my word out. Hydro, say the word completely. So you got about the, the hydro. Uh, uh, the hieroglyph, sorry, yeah. yes. Sorry, sorry. It's just, um, and how they pick the storytelling yeah. of these star beings. Yeah. And it's it's a weird, I think I, I read somewhere, that I think I want to say the longitude and the altitude the altitude of the pyramids is the exact 
uh, if you was to put it in numbers, the sack that you'd have to. It's yeah. It's, so there's, there's more mathematical yeah. equations that we obviously don't know yeah. because we're kids. But uh, yeah, it's all there. It, they along with the stars, right, and this and that, and the speed uh, of sound and stuff like that. Like there's too yeah. many like things that match up. That, yeah, that, that would point that it's not they're new more than yeah. we think they would have known at that time. Yeah, because there's yeah. even a device that was dug up. Uh, I don't know how long ago it was, but they just this our modern day scientists just haven't got a clue what it is. Mm. They're saying it could be a, a device used for uh, as a map uh, for uh, calculations to measure distances. That it looks like because you can see the cogs inside. Well, it's similar to cogs, yeah. but mechanical system that was moving. Um, and they just they literally don't know what it was, what it was used for. They just know that a form of technology, and it's literally you can see it's like gears and stuff, but they just don't know how it was made, how it was used, or mm. anything. So there's definitely stuff that we've, what we know as inventions, you know, combustion engines and uh, like computer technology, there's stuff that we know and how things work, but things yeah would would have been seen completely different. Yeah. It's it's our concept of how things should move yeah. and should work. So as you just said, combustion go. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean. What we're talking about that was their version of that's how you go yeah as yeah, i say it's, it's, even it's, with the the theory of the uh, the harmonizing your voice to be able to move these objects mm. so essentially if you used to just look at it from afar it's telekinesis mm. and maybe that was something that they had back then as well yeah it's um, interesting it'd be interesting what comes from this yeah, yeah. if anything does I should say but yeah you know going forward it it seems like it's definitely getting pushed you know yeah, they're, the they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to make it a lot more public now, aren't they? How cool would it be to see like, the UFO? I know you... Yeah, I think as a child I thought that I'd seen several, but it was probably mm. just planes or helicopters and that. Um, but but, you know those ones where you like... You know, as you said, where you could have been, it could have been, but you know like that one where you know. Yeah. Um, but it, again, because apparently Logan Paul's got the footage of it, hasn't I, it? I wanted to bring this up, yeah, but you... Go yeah, on, so uh, from the interview that, well, I've seen Logan's uh, little rant, well, not and so much. And he said he was bringing it out at the right time. Yeah. So the person that Logan actually spoke to to find out this chap in the middle of nowhere had the footage, he was on Joe Rogan as well. Um, and he says, you know, I'll try and keep it as short and accurate as I remember it all, but basically he'd been. Uh, in touch with this person who's got the actual footage uh, for years and years beforehand, and then it was just out of the blue. And it, like, it, sorry, Jack, it's yeah. supposed to be the best footage. Yeah, the I, most. So, most like, this was supposed to be defined that yeah. aliens do exist, UFOs are a thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's just supposed to be like the best footage ever caught. Yeah. So that's why, obviously, Logan Paul went looking for it. Yeah, so it was, uh, he's, he had the call off the chat. Uh, in the trailer and he was like right I've got this video come and look at it now so he's gone had a look and the way he described it was that it was uh, a video of these two lads two brothers he believes uh, were just driving along around near area 51 I think it was and there's like a post box or something they're having pictures next to it and they're doing a, a general tourist yeah. uh, type of thing and then as the video starts off again they're inside the car and it's like they're trying to get underneath the seat, they're scrambling, they're hiding, and you can see this light shining inside the car, but it's it's like it's inside, not just outside, it's as if the car's turning to glass and mm. all of inside's illuminating. And he said essentially it was like as if it was a, a ball just spinning the light inside of the car. So as if they were scanning inside yeah. of this car. And the one of them's turned around and gone, I've got to go, I'm running. So he's run out, and as he's just stopped and stood there, then apparently this, uh, I believe he said it was a disc, and it wasn't just like one solid colour, it was almost like a glowy fluorescent light just shining all the way around. And so that's, that's what, I don't know what happens after, maybe the video just cuts, but that's what this chap had seen. He spoke to Logan Paul, told him about it, and then, uh, so that original chap, that's pretty sorry, he'd offered, I think, 10 grand to buy that footage off him as well. 
but the man in the trailer's up, no. Yeah. I'm not showing it, I'm not giving it but away to anyone. Didn't for like something like up, up to like 100 grand for Well, it. yeah, so Logan Paul did the same. He said, look, I've got 100, 100 grand cash on yeah. me right now. Let me buy it. And so the chap still says, no, I'm not having it. No one's having this video. So he's turned around and said, well, I'm here. At least let me see it. But it. he had a like a, a, a body cam of some sort. Maybe it's like the old spy pen. It was, a, it was a button cam, wasn't it? Like, so it was embedded in the button. So yeah. it looked like a button on his shirt or something. Yeah. And so he's, he's watched it a, like, about three or four times and he's got different angles. So it's not just a dead on view. He's got different angles mm. so you can see it over and over. And yeah, he's just not, again, Logan's not going to release but it. But then, I, I don't understand why Logan Paul did that. Why? Yeah, why would you record it? And then not. No. And then, then hold everyone else, tell everyone you've got it and hold it to ransom. Yeah, I thought... you're basically doing what that geezer was doing for not showing everyone. But, again, does that... Is that in their heads then that this is so undeniably real and scary that we don't want these people, like, we don't want the general public to see well, what's going on? Well, okay, it's, it's, backlash will Yeah, but well, not necessarily a backlash, or is it, it, it just could be just that scary that it will blow everyone's minds mm. but I don't know we'll see I'm sure over the next uh, few months definitely anyway we'll see more video evidence yeah. from other people and what else is going to come from this whistleblower be uh, interesting in I, I would like the acknowledgement in our lifetimes that yeah. there is other beings that's always because when you think of universes yeah the, the vastness of space it's, it's, there's got to, there has to be something you know the uh, again, there was something I saw the other day where uh, they believe that there's micro forms, like microorganism life forms, in uh, Uranus and uh, Neptune because of their oceans and you know uh, with the core temperature being so hot, yeah, it's cold at mm. not whatever level. It's there's a a certain good space where there's going to be some form of life form, algae or whatever. Mm. So there's got to be some level. It's just how intelligent it is. But I mean, we're here, and as a civilization, we're not the the, the best of like, people, really. So there's got to be other forms that have gone mm. higher. Um, but yeah, we, we'll, we'll definitely see, won't we? It's uh, yeah, got to be interesting. Yeah, it'd be interesting, definitely interesting, and it's really intriguing just mm. just to have that that knowledge. Alone. I suppose that would change things. Yeah. No, no, no. Right. Right, so moving on from the extraterrestrial, we'll go on to the paranormal now. So, obviously, uh, a few weeks ago we had our paranormal ex- episode where I shared my experiences, you had one, but we remembered that the week after. Mm. Um, I actually had another experience on a job the other day. So, on this job, I've uh, fitted a new kitchen, done all the floor and everything, but it, while I was on that, in the house on my own, uh, there was a, a few knocks and bumps here and there, but because it's a uh, terraced house, so there's a house either side, you just automatically assume it's mm. the neighbours doing something, moving furniture or whatever. And is it just like your regular terraced house, or is it like... Uh, yeah, so it's an older, older-fashioned house. Mm. Um, more of a Victorian style house. Mm. Uh, they are old houses, to be fair, over in Worcester. And, yeah, so I'm not paying attention. Uh, there was the odd few light flicker as well, but I knew that these lights weren't in the best condition because I'd already tapped the one ball and it came back on on its own. So with that going on and off, you just assume, yeah, not necessarily dodgy one, but a dodgy ball on its way. Uh, but then, as I progressed through the job, so I'd put a new light fitting uh, above the dining table, but because I didn't have the dining table there, I uh, tied up the hanging light uh, shades. So it was one of those ones where it's a strip and it's got the three mm. cables with the big lamp shades. So I'd tie them up and whack a load of tape around them, just so I'm not going to hit my head as I'm walking in and out. And about an hour after I'd done it, the one light dropped back down 
So this tape, you know, it's, it's never the best of tapes, it's just electrical tape, but I've wrapped it around a good three times. And it's never happened before? No. So, I mean, if I'd wrapped it just once and barely caught it on its own, it might have done, but I'd wrapped it yeah, a good times. three times. And yet to that straps, well, the other two are fine, you know, I was like, all right, maybe, in my head I'm thinking, maybe I just didn't yeah, wrap it Yeah, it's just one of those things, yeah. Maybe I just did one little wrap, all right, no problem. Um, and so then, when I was there, uh, I'd left it for the whole weekend, went back the following week, and uh, done some other stuff. So again, I was there on my own, and this house has got a cellar as well. Uh, so uh, something had fell over in the cellar, I'd only been down there once just to turn the power off. Mm. Um, so that was a nightmare because she didn't know the alarm code. And so that was sounding off, so I had to mess around with all that. But anyway, yeah, so I'd only been down there once and there wasn't much down there, just a load of cobwebs and a couple of boxes and stuff. So I heard something fall over, but because I didn't pay attention when I'd first been down there, I don't know what had fallen yeah. over. Um, and what was you like at then? What was, was you like scared or was you just like that? Well, if I didn't have the, the door leading down to the, the cellar mm. open, I would have assumed it was one of the neighbours again. But, yeah, I was, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, again, because I, I wasn't sure if it's something that maybe, because there was stuff on the stairs, but as you go down, maybe it was something like that, but there was mm. nothing at the bottom of the stairs. So I just thought, all right, it was just, you know, I don't know what it was. It is what it is. So then, as I was just uh, talking to the customer again then, one of the other light fittings fell down. So it had a good four days taped up and not moved at all. And obviously, she'd already been upstairs over the weekend and everything, obviously up to bed and whatever. So it's not like there was someone upstairs at the time jumping up and down to try and dislodge the tape. Um, it just dropped while we was talking. And did she say a lot that house? No, so I asked the question then. I said, have you had any like, activity, uh, anything that you've noticed is a bit strange? And she's, she's a complete non-believer, so she mm. just says, no, you know, nothing's happened. So I think she's been in denial all these years that house is haunted, <laughs> because, as I said, there was no reason for this one particular log fitting to drop down good three four days of tied up with this tape yeah. all weekend and then it just happened to do it while I'm there again there was just no need nah. so uh yeah it's uh yeah I, I think I'm I'm just attracting some of these things now yeah uh, but that reminds me of another time actually I was working in uh in one of those uh Freemasons buildings in Birmingham Town Centre. Oh, okay. So the Masons, they're the, like a secret society. Yeah. I know it's not that secret. Um, and uh, I had one of the young lads, Jordan, working with me at the time. And he was he was scared of the dark as it is anyway. Like, but I was warning him up when we was down there. So we had our head torches on and we're rooting whatever cables and stuff. And because he was scared, I was like, yeah, but you know what it is though, ain't it, mate? If, if there's a ghost by you, they drain the batteries, don't they? You know, your phone will die, your, your, your head torch will die. As soon as I said that, both our head torches just died. And they were brand new as well, brand new pack of batteries and everything, and both of them just died. Oh, God, he ran out of there like a little girl, he did. I was laughing my head off. So, look, my phone was all right. I got the torch on my phone, but, oh, God. He, wouldn't want to, he didn't want to go back down afterwards. So, uh, did yeah, you, that just popped in my head. Yeah. Going back to your first story, they do mm. say when you remodel or doing work to the house that it it brings it can the activity it can, up more it can disturb and revitalize uh, any I wonder why why was it? I don't know I mean the kitchen uh, that we ripped today that was about uh, 35 40 years old Ooh, um that's a nice kitchen yeah uh, she's the customer had lived in the house for I think I think about 15 years so the first ma major thing she's having done to it anyway. Um, the style of the house as well, it would have been one of those that had the old house house toilets originally. Oh, okay. And so over the years, they've had them knocked through and extended mm. a little bit. Um, so yeah, 
could could be something like that just because on there making more mess and changing something that someone has already had done that there uh, there wasn't too keen on it. Uh, yeah, it was just a strange experience and. Yeah, I suppose you, obviously because we've talked about it on the podcast before, it's probably yeah, I thought I'd, stayed I'd, on your mind a bit more. Yeah, yeah, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd have to bring it up. Um, but if, if there's anyone, uh, I know we did say it before, but if, if you've got any experiences or anything yourself, paranormal or extraterrestrial, uh, yeah. just roll it in, let us know. Um, I haven't actually checked the emails this week because it's been a long week. So I apologise if someone has emails. Uh, I'll get to it on the next episode. Still our uh, boy Daniel, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So Little Danny G. Um. Uh, right, so, um. <laughs> moving on from any of this stuff now. Uh, all I got from that, remember, when, like, <laughs> on the Ali G movie where, like, he picks them all up on that, like, the FM, like, yeah. and he's like, just like. <laughs> Ali G's now just like. <laughs> oh god again if, if you know you want to send another email in just you know don't be shy we're uh, here for your questions uh, so I've heard of this the other day have you heard of vabbing what vabbing no so I didn't have a clue I'd never heard about this before or anything so when I so I assume it's spelled V A B B I N G, and I thought, is this some new form of, uh, you know, vaping or something? Is it like a contest for it or whatever? Um, nothing to do with vaping. Uh, so you know that uh, like pheromones, they have the sense and mm. it's how we attract each other with natural sense and stuff. So apparently, there's a a newish trend of women that are doing something similar, but basically they're getting a bit of their lady juices and rubbing them on their necks and whatnot instead of using perfume. They're using their natural scents. But the neck will look like a glazed donut, man. Well, it depends on what kind of lady they are, really, isn't it? <laughs> but it just made me think, like, so I've been with a lot of ladies in my time and there's a fair few that I would definitely not want to be smelling that walking around. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that I always smell the freshest, but <laughs> yeah, there's, um, <laughs> there's a few fucking crab sticks that'll be walking around, definitely. You know, uh, uh, is we'll, we all ought to go to the seaside, but I wouldn't want to be, be uh, living next to a fish and chip shop, if you get me drifted. Um, it's just, I can't... I'm... Why? Like, oh, why? Like, honestly, why? Like, I don't know why. It's like, you know, you get these things like, you think it, that's one thing, then you do it, it's a whole other thing. So like, yeah. <laughs> then, then to put it out there, then you do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. All I can imagine really is that some lady's been with a, a, a chap and it's like, he's picked it up saying that it smells like roses. You should, you should turn into a perfume or something. That she's, like, you know, had a little bit of a rub and then dabbed it on her neck and stuff. And then as she's with the friends, they're all like, what's that smell? And then she's convinced them to do the same and it's just become a, a bit of a trend now. Um, yeah, it's... <laughs> I mean, it's the Rona, that, yeah. We, you know, it's, it's a bit of a strange one. Yeah. Could you? I mean, we don't have to put up with it now, but could you imagine if you're sitting on a bus, it's a hot day like it is today, and they never smell the best in general, but you're just smelling that extra bit of a fucking whiff. God. So, imagine that, like, they're just walking around, there's flies just batting around them and that as well, thinking that they're going to have a snack. Yeah. You know, obviously not all ladies have got a nasty twang to them, but... And if it's fermenting on the necks and stuff to stop throughout the day, oh god, I hope I don't. I have just to don't work. understand why. Uh, yeah, I don't. I really don't know. Like it's in, <laughs> like if you keep it in house, it could. If you get in terms of like that's what you and your partner like, and that's what they kind of get off. But then you go out in public and have, you know, 
Yeah, I don't know why they do it. But I do see uh, these stupid adverts of um, it's a male cologne and it's pheromones. Remember like the old Lynx advert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, you have the click app. Yeah, and it, it spray himself, and then as he turned around, there was like hordes of women chasing after him. Yeah. So that's what these pheromone adverts are like, basically. He's, you know, spraying on himself, and then every woman just looks at him, and like, they're all attracted. Did you have one of those links, Nicky? I, I did, yeah. Um, they come, yeah, I think you had to get, like, buy free or something to get them. I can't, you, never used to come in every pack. No, I, I don't know if it was, like, a special pack or something, wasn't it? No. Similar to what they had at Christmas. Was he Ben Affleck in that, in that advert to it? Uh, I'm sure it was. Yeah, I think it was. And he'd like when a girl would look at him as he walked past, he'd flick it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was before, well, he was in school, wasn't we, I believe, mm. around that time. So that yeah, was before I was. Uh, I think it was about 2001 or 2000, I thought that maybe. Yeah. So that was, that was while we was in our nerd school days. Mm. Uh, before we started getting with the ladies. Um, but uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I thought that was just a. Strange one that I'd bring up to you. And what's that called? Vabbing. V. I'm assuming it's spelled this way anyway. V A double B I N G. I mean, I'm definitely not going to ask my wife to start doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. I'm just saying because I'm not saying it in a bad way. <laughs> if it does work and it starts attracting men, then we can't have anyone uh, trying to. Trying to link up, can we? <coughs> um, but speaking of bushes, anyway. Uh, so obviously I'm up early every day and I'm <laughs> walking the dog. Uh, so we've, I think it was Tuesday. Uh, so I didn't have to leave out early, but I'm still up around four o'clock anyway. So taking the dog on a walk, and then as I'm coming back around. There's this old lady that lives over the road. And you know where you've got those houses where they've got their own garden and then there's like a bit of grass next to the house mm. and then there's the pavement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that grass isn't theirs actually. No. But this lady, fair play to her, she always like, looks after it, cuts it and everything. There's a load of little fancy plants and stuff. But as I was getting back around to the house, so bear in mind, it's half five in the morning, roughly at this point. She was already outside, just trimming these bushes and that, well, is that what it gets to really, when you, you're retiring, you're at that age, you've got nothing else to do, but it's half five, you're gardening in the morning. Uh, I appreciate she wasn't, you know, using the lawnmower and that, but half five, just outside, really, I suppose trimming a bush. It's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the green bushes, nothing else, um, I'm going back to them smiles again. <laughs> just smell the grass. It's, uh, it, it, it's one of them, though, because I know I like to wake up and get it done. So if she just, I don't know, got up, couldn't sleep, just wanted to get it done. Oh, no, she's always up early. Because yeah. She's one of these ladies that uh, takes the car off the driveway and parks it on the road. Because, obviously, I've got the hospital around the corner, and you do sometimes have the doctors or other staff just parking up. Uh, but she's in a little cul de sac bit around the corner. So she puts it on the road to stop mm. one less person from parking on the road, where they're yeah. entitled to, because, you know, it's... The pay road tax. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she's one of those, I, I do see her early every morning. Never says hello to me. The amount of times mm. I've walked past, say, like, morning or hello and that. So, miserable. Too busy, man. Too occupied for me. I, I think it's just one of those personalities where it's everyone younger is antisocial and I don't want to speak to them, they're going to have attitudes. Plus, she's probably seen the dog pissing, pissing up one of her bloody little pants or something, so she doesn't like me. Um, but yeah, it's. it's, it's uh, I, I just. Not that it's strange, but I just thought it was a bit. Yeah, it's a bit early, yeah. yeah. Like just because you don't want to upset the neighbours, and it's a bit common courtesy, but. It's it's there wasn't no. Set you have, it? No, yeah, it's good. There wasn't no lawnmower, but it's, you know, it's just strange. You'd think. I'd like to think it was me rather that I'd do something similar to what I do now. Get up, have a cup of tea, you know, chill for half an hour or so, and then, you know, walk the dog and that. Uh, I'd like to think I'd be doing something like that instead of literally the crack of dawn as soon as there's the sunlight, getting straight out and pottering around. 
you know, I'll go to bed early, my physical needs. I don't want to be looking at that as a, a little, well, I don't like gardening, so I don't know why I'm even trying to think about it. I can't be out in the sun too long, can I? It's a ginger thing. Um, yeah, so going from that now then, uh, I've got some of our new feature, our best holes. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've uh, got to make a whole episode of these. <laughs> to be fair, there is just thousands on there, so we could we could do a whole episode. To um, be fair, if someone would have told about that fabbing on one of these, I would have said that ain't true. You know what? I'm surprised I haven't seen it on here actually. Uh, I mean, I've not spent all week on it anyway. I've only just the odd bits here and there that I've seen it. Um, so this first one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, so during military training in 2000, I walked into my friend's room to see five guys sitting on chairs and masturbating to porn on the single TV. They had loo roll tubes taped to their faces like binoculars as making eye contact would be gay. I left very quietly. No, I can see that happening up until the toilet roll is binoculars. To be fair, I could see that though as well. Because then, boy watching the same rooms go one after another. No, so it's it's not. Yeah, I, I don't so, know what they're doing do, it together. Do, do, like, yeah, I don't so know. So it's gay anyway. To... <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> not. Well, it's just <laughs> because you could just turn like this and still look. You can still turn your head. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is the way horses have the blinkers to look like, to the side. Yeah, to block the peripheral vision. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah, but someone could quick look. Yeah, and you're still going to be hearing each other. You know, and also, I had skis of walking. Why didn't why the door lock or anything? It was probably the communal room, wasn't it? But then, he, so someone's going to see. So it's just, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have just been that one person. I'm going to go, that it. one's fine. That one's got to be fine. Because but, just because you wouldn't leave the door unlocked, you would go one after another. Or proper stop the vision, not not just put them so you can still turn your head. Yeah, but... I get because it's army that he, if, if you take away the army, did you say it was army? Yeah, yeah, so... If you take away the yeah. army from it, you think it's bullshit. Yeah. But because it's army, you, that's there is some validation to yeah, it. Yeah, that's why I think it's real. But the extent of it... Well, I mean, it's a lot of detail, isn't it? But, uh, no, I, I, I do think it's real. Just, there's all the, the acts, uh, the... Uh, Rites of passage and everything that they make these. Not so much these days yeah. because it's all bloody politically, uh, politically correct. Um, you you do see a lot, a lot of videos of girls in army barracks and they're all watching, which I, I get. Yeah. But it's just the. the <laughs> it's just the. The, the toilet the, roll. The, if, if you didn't say the toilet roll thing, 100% sure that makes it a lot. <laughs> because when I've seen all these videos, I've never seen one. They're all like, we. I don't know. I mean, it's not something that we've done either. Uh, when we were young. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all we we all had the, the toilet roll tubes and pretended that there were binoculars or a, uh, a telescope. Yeah, but we never but, put the two together. No, what I was getting at is that we never on a sleepover. We never whacked on some porn and both like watched it and had a wait near it. But what I'm saying, look, Jack, if you <laughs> if, if take away that, I'd say it's true, and the door probably being locked would do, be the only question to think. But then that just makes I don't understand who said let's all put this porn on, but we can't we can't see each other. It's gonna be good, but you can still turn your head. That so you want to go truth on that? Oh, I do, yeah, because in the year two thousand as well, yeah. so it's harder to get your, your hands on. Internet yeah. and But still go after another. I know the good. It's, 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 it's the taller. In the, that they're in training times of the essence. They're going to just bang it so out. You, how are you going to find? How many people was there? Uh, Four of you. So that's ten taller rolls. Empty yeah, taller yeah. rolls. Yeah. No, man. <laughs> it, it, so the taller roll makes that a lot for me. But you're going to go with true on that one. Yeah, because I think that if there was a bit more detail as well. So, yeah, it says that they're sitting on chairs. I'd like to know how close the chairs are. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, I had a complete In 2000, you. there was just, you know, TVs weren't that big. I would assume that it's be in a communal block if you want to. Yeah, yeah, so it would have just been. You want to look at someone in the dorm in the army barracks 
whatever. Yeah, well, back then it was probably just like a 20 inch yeah, yeah. Uh, TV in the community. Or so you would assume that'd be quite close together as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then how naked are they? Are they still wearing the tops and they've just pulled the, the bottoms down and it just sticks out? I think mean, that's uh, what would be worse being completely naked or doing that. <laughs> like just putting your shorts down and leaving your t shirt on. But I mean, to them, they're not going to be embarrassed though, are they? They're already there having a wank with each other. I think one would be naked or two. I think, yeah. Yeah, it at depends least on one your, of them's naked. It depends on your, your style of choice. Yeah. Um, if you want your belly, um, if you want on your belly or your t shirt, <laughs> I suppose. But again, I wonder if they're having it as a posh wank. See if they have a condom on while they're wanking. Because I wouldn't want to be cleaning up the mess afterwards. Because yeah, potentially. It's a toilet just... roll. On the, of their eyes. Maybe they're that's not wearing yeah, condoms. Maybe right? that's why they had the, the sort of roll no. tubes because they just reeled it all off. And I was trying to clean that mess and thought, is that mine? Is that theirs? Oh. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> so you're going for so I'm going mm. real with that one then. As I said, I'm only going for because the toilet roll. If you take out the toilet roll, I'd say it's true. <laughs> right. Uh, so, another one. Uh, I was at a safari park where you drive your cars through the enclosures and when we were in the line enclosure I really needed a piss could not hold it in so I jumped out of the car and pissed behind the tree now I'm calling bullshit straight I'm away on that bullshit, no. because it's bad enough when you're just driving through the monkey enclosures you know they're on the car and that monkey on the car fuck off yeah. you know they're, they're ripping off your window wipers and all that and so, what do you think you can get out when there's lions around? That just because they've lived in a cage the whole life and they're, they're used to eating raw chicken that's mm. just chucked to them and that, what would you think that it's okay to get out and get your little fucking dick out and piss behind, piss behind a tree as well? Yeah. It's something that they would have already marked up. You know, if they've got their sense around. If you start throwing a new sense in there, they're going to be coming straight over like what you're doing, dickhead. Yeah, that, that's the law. Has to be because then, yeah, it's just the law, yeah. Um, I should have uh took notice of some of the comments on it. I didn't, didn't look at any of those to be honest. So, yeah, whoever, whoever confessed to that one, you chat shit. What are you lying for? Are you lying? Uh, <laughs> so another one, uh, went on a first date with a girl who told me she had an addiction to drinking vinegar by the bottle, there was no second date. No, I, no, I think that's probably true, mate. Yeah, so I believe that. that this was more of one of where I thought we could have a little discussion afterwards because what would your thoughts be of that? So my partner <laughs> literally would do that. What's that thing you eat? Cockles. Yeah. Oh, and she drinks the... Oh, oh. the juices. Oh. And she looks at me while she's doing it as well. Ah. Oh. The... <laughs> And it, again, so that's a, that's a weird thing that I can see happening as well, easily. Cause maybe that's wife, what they can. Yeah, yeah maybe that's what, that yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so my wife would do the same with Grave. Of, of, and she's not Northern? No, no. Um, she's Ginger, but not Northern, no. Uh, we've, we've been out for a meal, family meal, uh, and she's ordered two extra little gravy pots and essentially just drank straight out of them. You know, she hasn't physically picked up the little gravy jug and drank it, but it's it's on the place, and she's it, it, almost you... as if it was like soup, just spooning it up, like, shoving it in her mouth. And it's just gravy, like when it's on its own after everything else, like, I just don't see the point in it. Saying that, my little sister used to do it as well, actually. She would physically make a jug of gravy and just drink it as if yeah. it was like a, a cup of coffee or something. Well, wouldn't you just get one of those? Um... The bottles. Bottles, yeah. Yeah, bottles are boss. Uh, yeah, I don't know why you just wouldn't do that. It, it, it's a different taste, to be fair, though, isn't it? Depending on what gravy. Yeah. Um, so you've got nothing strange that you would do anything like that with? Say that, you, you love your mayonnaise, don't you? Uh, yeah, I do pro probably put a bit too much mayonnaise and yeah. stuff. Remember the amount of times I've said to you, I've got some chips with their mayo. Yeah. Um, um, but not in terms of... No, I'd say not, nothing that comes, nothing where I want to drink nothing, vinegar or Yeah, gravy. nothing, nothing weird. Um, you know, like when you drink, I just imagine like getting the plate, 
Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing, though, it's always going to be a plate, and you're never mm. going to have a, a bowl of like, chicken and gravy or something. It's always going to be on a plate, isn't it? Do you know what? I think, I think one of my brothers used to do that during the gravy from the Sunday dinner. Nah. Uh, oh, oh. More, more plates chaos at the end of it, because it's well, residue of mash and gravy and like, little bits and bobs. And, so I'll just let the dog have a quick lick of it and then quick rinse in a dishwasher. To be fair, my plate's always empty. Oh no, I'll eat all the food, but I'm not going to lack up yeah. the gravy and that. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be a bit messy. But again, if the wife does that, she'll literally run a thumb along the plate, licking it like it's bloody... You know, like your child's got a bit of dirt on the face, <laughs> and, and then a well, wipe in the face. She does that with plates. Mm. Uh, th- that one, one hundred percent true. That yeah, it's, one, it's definitely that, true. One hundred percent true. Yeah, I mean, hopefully this person's found true love now since uh, the vinegar lady. Um, come on, and then uh, we've got another one. Uh, her confession, to my amazement. Been with my girlfriend for nearly five years, lived together for three, never heard or even know when she has taken a shit, ever, not once. That's a lot. Not even when we've been in a hotel room. No, that's Her a lot. dedication to me not knowing. I think that person is just oblivious. So, I, I couldn't go through, if I was her, I couldn't go through that much effort Still, just to hide yeah. a fart. Let alone go to the toilet and that. Oh, well, that's the, the, the fart and shit to that stinky. But if. Like, no, you wouldn't care, would you? No, because if, if your bowel mo- movements are that far. Sometimes you just have to die, you just have yeah, to Yeah, like if it stinks and that, that's more reason to be like, look, I'm going to have a fucking shit now. Yeah. Like, that's a lot, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You just have a shower and just, to, like, I'll, that I'll, one then, but. I think he's just that oblivious that he doesn't realise what's going on. Yeah. He's probably always on his phone. Or he's a lie. Yeah. I think he's a lie, man. It's, it, it, she's definitely, she's yeah. definitely pooped near him or while they've been together. Uh, you know, again, because if you're in a hotel, how long are you in the hotel for? Yeah. She so hasn't been, like, even if it's just a, a long weekend, a three-day weekend, she's not due for a shit. Yeah. Or she's waiting for him to go and... Like, oh, did a shit for three days? Nah, man, that's nah. a fucking lie. I mean, I know you've done it when you've been constipated, but, you know, you've not done it on purpose. Yeah, you wouldn't want to make yourself no, that way. <laughs> no. So, uh, last one now. Uh, this one resonated to me because hopefully it reminds you of a story. I'll, I'll read it out and you should remember wh- where I'm going through with this. Uh, so, a drunk bloke at Liverpool Street Station was struggling to find his train. I asked him, where are you going? He mumbled, where? Clearly he was so drunk, so I helped him uh, to get, uh, helped him to get help. As we pulled away, I realised where in heart was a later stop. It was the last train. So this person has seen this drunk man stumbling around, can't find his train. Yeah. Obviously there's a bit of a language barrier, because as we touched on before, you can go 20 minutes and there's a different Mm. accent. So he's asking, where, W-H, are you going? And this drunk bloke wants to go to where, W-A-R. And so he's helped him off the train. Saying, no, no, you need to go speak to security or whatever. And then he's like, <laughs> missed the last train then. Poor sod. But Are you on about Manchester? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't even know when it was now. Good 10 years ago, roughly. Yeah, I'd say about 2007, 2008. Yeah, so... Uh, 2008. I think, well, if we're going to tell it, might as well tell the whole story, really. So we went to Manchester to, what, Kanye West. Yeah, it was about 2008, yeah. 2008. Yeah. Uh, so we went to Birmingham Town Centre, got the train. Uh, just the four of us, wasn't it? Yeah. And then, as we got off the train, uh, torrential rain, we was toddling around, and then the one person with us had left their bag on the train. Yeah, and this is back in the day where you had to wear shoes to go 
out of clubs. You had yeah. to wear shoes, otherwise you're just a no go. Yeah. I hated them tons. I know. So I fucking hated them. Us two, we carried on, followed around a bit, while the others went to try and find the bag left yeah. on the train. Back to the train station. Obviously yeah. gone. So we carried on from there then, eventually met back up. No shoes, no go. So we carried on. Uh, tried finding the friend that we were going to stay at. Uh, that was all of a saga. We was all drenched. I remember going to a shop to get some socks. Um, so then we were going to the concert. Uh, that was an all right concert in general. Yeah. yeah. It was good enough time in that sense. And then we tried to get into the clubs afterwards, but because there was no shoes for one person, it couldn't happen. So. We ended up just going straight to the train station. Yeah, Didn't we... even go back to the other person's house to sleep the rest of yeah. the night. We just went to the train station. And I remember us sitting there, and it was just the drunk bloke that come over and just started talking to yeah. us all. Yeah, absolutely it, rubbish, wasn't it? Yeah, he was mumbling, trying to ask us questions. And then it was the security that came over then, wasn't it? Yeah, went, moved him off. I think his name was John or something, wasn't it? Come on, John. Come what on. Have I, done? I just remember him going up this. Oh, yeah. What have I done? What have I done? But in hindsight, why didn't we just book the book hotel? Because we was meant to be staying at. Um, I yeah, can't but after hangar. that, after that, rather than staying in the train station, because we realised at some point the last train we missed the last train, so we'd have to wait till next morning to get one. I think the idea was we just wanted to just get back home. Yeah, so the early train, I think it was like 6 o'clock, right? Yeah, it something. was around that, so it was just like, we'll just, just get the first train. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't do that now, mate. No, no chance. Just, no. We've done loads of stupid on top of that. I don't know why we, yeah. yeah. When you look back at it, you just, you just change logistically. Yeah. Just be prepared. I know. Because even like when we went to Liverpool, the one time, and it was, uh, like, there was only like, we only had like two rooms between six of us or something. And then he was like, yeah, be all right, we'll just all sleep in the same rooms. And then obviously there's security on the door and they're like, no, you haven't got a room booked in here, so you ain't coming in. So we ended up just going up, getting our bags no. and just going down and sleeping in the vehicles again. Then. I don't know why we did stupid stuff. Just, oh, I don't miss them days. No, no. So like, there were, you know, there were times of the laughs, but yeah, messing around like that, I do not miss them. Oh. Right, so after that little trip down memory lane, yeah. I think we'll call that a pod now then. Yeah, definitely um, we've covered uh, a lot of aspects. Yeah. Some more discussion than others. I know. Um, I think I'll <laughs> just put in a bit of thought about what we would do on an alien invasion. Maybe we could do that as a, a special in a couple of weeks. Uh, like how we did with the zombie attacks. Um, so yeah, I know I've already said it, but uh, all the socials on the YouTube side will be floating up and down and flashing here and there as they do. Uh, but send us an email, realtalkingpod at gmail.com uh, or tweet us, slide in the DMs at Ash and JD. Uh, yeah, literally anything, any questions, any topics, uh, any experiences. Paranormal, extraterrestrial, or just life experience. That's not. Mm. Send us a message. So, uh, yeah, leave it at that for the rest of the week, then.